Okay. So let's say that I am between negative two and five. If X lies between negative two and five, let's say we are greater than or equal to the negative two, but less than that five. How do I write that in my interval notation? What do I use? When I have that greater than or equal to, that means I have to use that square bracket, negative two, comma, five, and on this one, I'm missing the or equal to, so that means I'm just going to use that parentheses, right? Because I do want to include the negative two, but I do not want to include that five. <coughs> what about, um, what if I said that x is less than a negative two, but X is also greater than or equal to a positive five. What would that answer look like? I mean, if I'm on the number line, here's my negative two and five. If I am greater than five, I am going in this direction, but if I am less than negative two, so I'm going in opposite directions and I just have this one section in between where my answer doesn't apply. How do I answer this in my interval notation? What am I gonna have to employ there? Union, intersection, circle, or uh, symbol. So I'm going to negative infinity, negative two, and then I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to pick back up at five and go to positive infinity. Now, again, infinity is just one of those things you can never get to, right? So I'm not including infinity because I can't reach it. So they have parentheses. The negative two parentheses, but that five needs a square bracket, right? So when it comes to our inequalities in four or five, this is what our answers are going to look like, okay? So checking out problem three. Now my f of x this blue line my parabola what is f of x isn't that just my y so this is saying f of x is greater than zero which just means when is y greater than zero well, all of my greater than zeros on y's, remember, cross that axis, y is positive, but down below that axis, y is negative, right? So when is it going to be above, when is it going to be greater than zero? Here. And as y goes to positive infinity, x is going to go to where? Negative infinity, right? And here, and this time, as y goes to positive infinity, x is going to go to positive infinity, right? But I do have this break in the middle. So this is one of those where I'm going to be using that union symbol. I'm going from negative infinity to negative two. I do not have the or equal on here, so that's parentheses. Union two to 
to positive infinity. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so what would it look like if it was less than or equal to? Less than or equal to? Come on, you. This guy down here, less than. When is y less than zero? In other words, when is y negative? So that's going to be below, right? And I do have the or equal to on this one. So I have negative two to two. Do you have a mask? All right. For you to try, now it's a little bit different. What flipped this graph over? Why is this graph concave up, but this graph is concave down? What makes that happen? Negative x. My a right there in front of x is a negative number, right? Okay, so we're looking for when is g of x less than 0? Well, let's see what you come up with. So this time, even though my graph is flipped over, I'm looking for when is g of x, when is my y going to be less than 0? When is y negative? So as this goes to negative infinity, as that y goes to negative infinity, x is also going to negative infinity. And as this y goes to negative infinity, x is going to go to positive infinity. Right? So I have negative infinity, negative 1, union 4 to infinity. Yes? I just want to know when is it less than zero. So I need to know when is that graph below that x-axis. Don't forget, this is going to continue on. And it's not a very steep slope, but it is going to get wider and wider and wider and wider. And it will go, you know, eventually to negative infinity. Now, when is, look, when is y greater than 0? That's when I'm going to be above that y-axis. So I have negative 1, comma, 4. I do have the or equal to. So that's going to be in a square bracket. 
okay? Now, when it comes to two, and you have both the parabola and a linear, to me, and this is totally a preference, I always look from the point of view of the parabola. To me, when this says, when g of x, my linear equation is greater than f of x, my parabola. I like to look at when is f of x, instead of saying g of x is greater than, how can I flip that over? g of x is greater than f of x, so f of x is less than g of x, right? I'm going to go backwards on here because it's a little bit more. So when is this parabola below that linear equation? So I'm looking for that section right there. G of X is greater than F of X, so F of X is less than, since F of X is my parabola, when is that below my linear equation from negative two? And remember, these are the X's, so don't look at those Y's. These are my X's, negative two to two. So when is f of x greater? Well, that's going to be above. So again, I know that that doesn't look like it's actually getting wider, but if you think about from this section to this section, it is getting wider, isn't it? So when is it above? Negative infinity and negative two, union two, two positive infinity. All right, you give a shot at six for me. Okay, f of x is my parabola. So that's this guy. g of x is linear. Now when is f of x below the g of x? Negative 3, negative infinity. No parentheses, union, three to infinity. 
Yes? When is it greater? That's when it's above that line. So it's going to be negative 3, comma, 3. Okay? All right. When you don't have a graph, and all I give you is just the equations. Ah. We have 9x No, we don't. We have problem nine. X squared minus 4x is greater than zero. Still looking for when is the function going to be greater than zero. I want a factor, and I want to check out A. Is A... Positive or negative? Remember, if A is positive, your graph is concave up. If A is negative, your graph is concave down. What does factoring give me? Why do I want to factor? Those are my x-intercepts, right? That's when y will equal 0. So I need to know when y is above 0. So if I look at x squared minus 4x, what would factor out of both of those terms? So I'm going to write x times x minus 4. Right, so what are my intercepts? What are my x-intercepts? Yep, perfect. Okay, so here's my graph. I'm going to be at 0 and 4. Now, looking at my a, I got a positive 1, right? So that tells me that that graph is going to be... Okay, uh, I don't know how far down this is going to go. I don't know how wide that's going to be. All I need to know is from this point to this point, we're above. And in between those two points, we're below. So I want to know when it is above, right? So that's negative infinity, comma, zero. I don't have the or equal to, union, 4, to infinity. Yes? Check out A. You got to know whether your graph is up or down. And then you got to know where it's going to be above or below those x-axis. What's going to give it? Your x-intercepts. You need to know when you're going to cross that x axis. So let's look at 13. I have x squared plus x minus. 12. Where am I getting that minus 12 from? Yeah. All right. What can I multiply that will give me a negative 12 and add to a positive 1? Okay, good. So that gives me x minus 3 times x plus 4, right? So what are my intercepts? A positive 3 and a negative 4.
Now, looking at my equation, do I have a U or an N? Positive. So I have a U. Let me just make it big. This is. Oops, that's wrong. Negative four, zero. And three, zero. When is it greater? When am I gonna be above the x-axis? Negative four. Union, three, to infinity. If this problem had let read less than, what if this had been um, not But less than. Well, how would that change my answer if my inequality symbol was less than instead of greater than? It's just in between them, right? Because that's where it's below. So that would have been negative four, three. Yes? Okay, let's look at 17. Is there anything that I can multiply to get a positive one and add up to get a negative one? I mean, one times one would add to a two, wouldn't it? That's not going to factor, is it? So I'm going to have to pull out my quadratic equation and use that. Negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared for ac over 2a, right? Who's my b? Negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 1. Now the rest of it, the only thing that really matters in this one is what ends up under that radical. Remember what we call the number under the radical? Mm -hmm. Right with the D. My discriminant. Remember that? What happens when I do 1 squared, I get 1 minus 4. What number is going to be up under that radical? Yeah, I have 1 plus or minus the square root of a negative 3 over 2. Does a negative square root of a negative 3, is that a real number? No, it's not. So what does that tell me about my graph?
I'm not going to have any x-intercepts. This is not a real number because of this guy right here. So there's not going to be any. So that means that either my graph is on top and going to positive infinity or it's all below. But what it's not going to do is it's never going to cross that x-axis. What kind do I have concave up or concave down on this one? Is my A a positive or a negative? Somewhere, and I'm not saying it's that high up. It might be higher up. It might be lower. It might be more to the left. It might be more to the right. But I do know that it's all above that x-axis, right? because of this negative, not because it didn't factor, but because I have a negative under that radical. Remember your rules. If you have a positive number under here, you have two real solutions. If you have a zero under here, you have one real solution. But if you have a negative, there is no solutions. You'll never touch that x-axis. So when am I going to be less than or equal to zero? I'm not. So that one is a no solution. Okay. All right, you try these three, and I'm just going to walk around. Hey, Miss White, you see I was here. Sir? You see I was uh, here. You marked me, uh, sorry, I'm mean, absent. Um, for class, you're absent. Uh, I'm supposed to be online. Um, all right, Who's which one is talking to me? Uh, camera order. Yes. Okay. All right. Gotcha. You mean that zero? Mm -hmm. You want it zero on the end, right? Mm -hmm. So the only thing that's going to factor, you're not going to be able to factor that to your two binomials, are you? The only thing that's going to come out of there is... Mm -hmm. So that's one of those greatest common factor problems. If you get stuck, flag me down. I'll come help. But when you brought it over, <laughs> oh. 
It's just when it like because there's no break in it, mm -hmm. then you just have the um, bracket in parentheses like that. Um, mm -hmm. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That un that or equal to makes it square bracket. my question. When you make braiding, right? So since all of it's above, mm -hmm. so when is it greater than? And we know this one, it was never going to be 
less than. And on this one, it's never going to be less than. So it's always going to be greater than. So instead of no, it's going to be always all the other. So what could I factor out of x squared plus 8x? I'm going to take out an x. Now my a is positive. I've got a positive 1 here. So I know that my shape is a u. And my intercepts are going to be x is 0. And from here, I'm going to get x is equal to a negative 8. Right? So I have a graph that looks something like that. So where am I above that y-axis? From negative infinity to union with zero to infinity and everybody up in those parentheses. Yes? All right, what did you have to do with? 14, you have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Moving that 12 over, it was a negative, so now when I move it over, it's a positive. What can I multiply to get a 12 and add to get a 7? So that means that my x-intercepts are a negative 3 and a negative 4, yes? Positive, so my shape is a U. Negative 4, 0, and negative 3, 0. When am I less than? When am I below from negative 4 to negative 3? Is there any break in the time that I'm below? No. And I have just the greater than? Uh-oh, I wrote that wrong. I'm doing the problem right, but I wrote the problem wrong. Still looking at less than, and we're at the parentheses. All right, what happened when you did 18? Does 18 factor, is there anything that I can get to multiply to a four? And add up to a 2. So again, in order to get those x-intercepts, I've got to use the quadratic. Now, don't get it in your head that whenever you use the quadratic, you have some different kind of answer. It's okay to use the quadratic. I've got negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 
over 2 times 1. And it happened again, didn't it? Under my radical, my discriminant here become a negative 12. Now, all that tells me is I'm never touching the y, the x-axis. So, it's positive, so I have a u-shape. And that U is going to be somewhere above the x-axis. So what's my answer going to be? When is it greater than zero? Always, right? It's never getting below zero, is it? Because this one was less than... I was never going to be less than, but this one is greater than, so I'm always going to be greater than, right? So the symbol changed what my answer was going to be, okay? Okay, guys, that's what I have. Um, I hope I see you online on Wednesday. If you don't have any questions, you are good to go. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. I wanted to stop recording. Mm. Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's in Canvas. Do Sunday. You too. Thank you. You have a good night.